Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon on our super hardcore series. We have got right here our Mahindra and our trailer and the crane lifter right there. We used this one in the last episode and we did prove that we could lift logs with that one onto a trailer. Which some people have pointed out means that we could in fact use the auto load trailer a little bit because we have the means to load that trailer if we were putting just two or three trees at a time. We would realistically be able to pull it with that tractor right there. That is something we would be able to do. This has been pointed out to me. So Julie noted we could do that if we wanted to. Uh, up around here, what have we got? Let's just check around the trees a minute. We've got stumps on the ground. And we've got a couple of trees up here, look. I've got some logs there. Did I... I don't think I cut these up. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. They're not cut up. Um, however, things have changed. There have been updates. Things have definitely changed. And I feel things have changed for the better. Whether you agree with me or not is entirely a different matter. But what we're going to do is I'm just going to leave that one there a minute. And I'm going to get this one over here. So my question that I asked you all last week was after we have got our universal cell points and the other bits that we want to get, what main task do you want me to do first that is not forestry related. Do you want me to buy sheep and start working with the sheep? Or do you want me to get some... I'm going to cut down another couple of trees. Uh, do you want me to get all the equipment for making silage bales and make some silage bales? So we had 813 people vote. We had 230 people say go for sheep first. And 583 people said go for the silage bales first. So the first thing we're going to be doing and making and selling is silage bales. Now, we come to the universal sell points. And I had a few people saying things along these lines. And I think it is an excellent idea. So much so that it is going to be this week's weekly question. Um, now, I said to you, I've said to you all along, that we're going to set up and... And the universal sell point, once we've got it, is we're going to set it up and it's going to cost us $100,000. And the way that we're going to do that is we've got this placeable here. And a miscellaneous right there. It costs 10000 because it's 100% prices. And it sells all of these things right here. Uh, if you want to sell liquids, you've got to use an overload function to be able to do it, but it does work. So we can sell all of these items here, and I said in order to be able to make it up to 100,000, what we'll do is we will buy some of the decorations to go with it. So we'll buy 90,000 worth of decorations, so a farm shack, a couple of sheds or something like that, and put them around it. And... Several people said, well, if I'm, like, buying an old barn like that and, uh, you know, a shack and a shed and things like this and making it up to 100,000, then what I should be doing is I should be buying the 150% universal selling station because um, I'm investing in a load of storage around there. So, essentially, I'm stockpiling it at the selling station in those structures that I've spent $100,000, it should be, um, that I spent a hundred thousand on, and I should then be able to get the best possible price on the market. So selling at one hundred and fifty percent would be more believable for that particular scenario than selling at one hundred percent. So my question for this week is: Do I spend a hundred thousand dollars and get the one hundred and fifty percent universal selling station? Or do I just spend the $10,000 and not worry about getting a load of extra bits to go with it, just spend the 10000 and have it like that? So essentially what we're doing is 
the person is coming up and he's collecting it, we still got to have a minimum quantity, a trailer load, in order to be able to sell it. But we're not necessarily getting the absolute best prices on the market that that one would represent. So do I go for $10,000 on the normal one, or do I spend $100,000 on that one right there? It's your vote. It's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right-hand corner. We've also got the toolkit over here, which is one that I would like. I want to buy that one, and I'm actually going to buy that one right now. We've just got on to the... Actually, no, we won't. We'll, we'll wait until we go over to the shop and we'll buy that. But we'll put that one over here so that we can come back and we can repair our machinery. Now, I was also asking you last week, should I go and buy a load of... Um, not buy, should I sell the Mahindra and um, a few other bits and pieces off the farm uh, in order to be able to get to our target of that fence tractor a lot faster? And I've had a lot of feedback coming from that one. A lot of you now saying that I should probably get rid of the Mahindra. Not all of you. Some of you still think that I should keep it. Um, no, we worked hard to get it, and it is a useful farm vehicle for getting around quickly. Kind of like a quad bike. If you've got an ATV on a farm and you use it a lot, uh, I've worked on farms where an ATV is absolutely essential, and not having the ATV available to use for any period of time, so having your arm cut off, it is... It becomes an essential part of the farm. Now, admittedly, our farm that we've got set up right here, it's not an essential part. So it's not as crucial. It's not as important. Um, but there's a lot of you who still think that I should keep it. But the, things have changed. Things have definitely changed. Because I was asking you all of this based on us going to get this tractor. We've got the small tractors right here. And it's that fence tractor right there. That's the one that we were going to work towards. And we were going to get it with a front loader attachment like that. And get a front loader as well. It was going to cost us just under $85,000. Bit pricey. But that tractor would set us up for a long time. As I said, things have changed. We're going to have available an air-cooled, um, high-visibility AgroStar Freesit. Deutz Far AgroStar Freesit. Now, I've used one of these before. This is the exact tractor that I use, right down to the same pattern on the seat. All of the controls are identical when I look at it. And it brings back a lot of harsh memories. I didn't like this tractor at all. This is a tractor that I've... I spent a lot of time driving this tractor and I hated the thing. Right? This is the, my least favourite tractor I ever drove. Unfortunately, it is now available up here. It is. It has been brought up into the mountains. It has become available. We can have with front hydraulics right there. And we can have a bigger engine on it if we want to. So that would take it up to 143. But we can leave it at 107 horsepower to start with. We can upgrade the engine later on. Uh, we've got multiple options for wheel setup. And if you look down here, we can also have a front loader attachment. So we can go with that with the basic engine front loader attachment with a front hydraulic on it as well, and it's going to cost us 22500 We can already afford to buy it. So I'm not very happy that that particular tractor has wound its way up the valley, but it appears that my hand is being forced, and that's the one we're going to be going for, because um, it makes no sense to go and work towards an $85,000 tractor when we've got one available for 23000 that will do the same job. So, much as I dislike that tractor, it looks like it's going to be part of the fleet. And we also have now available another vehicle, an another vehicle, another tool, which, um, I, you know, we have sort of considered this one, but the, um, the crane lifter that we've got actually works better than that one. But we now have a log drag right there. That one is really, really good. You can put that out, you can winch it out, you can attach multiple logs, you can drag them around. Um, it's the perfect log skid. So that's another one that we're going to want. We don't actually need to go and sell any vehicles in order to be able to get those items. 
And then we can come back up and we can drag a few logs back into the mill and then we will have enough money to be able to get the um, auto load trailer which we will then be able to use with our new air-cooled Deutz tractor. Much to my disappointment. So it would appear that things have changed big time this week. So what I'm doing is I'm not just dawdling uh, for the sake of dawdling. I'm just taking these tops here and I'm going to go and run these up to the mill. We've got a little bit of time before nightfall and I'm not gonna, I'm not going to have time to go over there and get these items and bring them back. I was going to drive over with the Mahindra, leave the Mahindra parked over there for now. We'll walk back and get that one another time. I'm not going to worry about it now pick up the new Deutz. Uh, we will want a front loader for it. We will want the thingy on the back. Uh, we'll also get a front weight for the tractor as well um, because we'll probably be glad of that one. Um, and we get a log grab to go with the front loader. Uh, so we'll get everything that we need to go with that one and then we'll bring it all back in the morning. The only thing that we won't be getting just yet is the auto load trailer because we're not going to have quite enough money to be able to get that as well. So there's another $500 added to the kitty. I'm hoping that by the morning we're going to lose about seven grand overnight from our loan interest. But things should be balanced out quite nicely. We'll still have the money to be able to buy our tractor. And, oh, wait a minute. One thing. How much was that piece of forestry equipment? That's the only thing I didn't look at. 4,500, that's okay. We'll still we'll be able to afford that one as well. If we can't afford that one as well, we'll wait. And uh, we won't wait, we'll go and buy that. We'll just leave the front loader um, and we'll buy the front loader a bit later on. I think that'd be the best way to do it. Um, so yeah, for now, what I'll do is I'll move this tractor over. Well, I'll, I'll drive up near there. And we'll go and cut those trees up a little bit. We're also going to want to buy a stump grinder so that we can start clearing a load of the stumps out of here. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it's, it's we're, we're, we're really making some decent progress now. We're making decent progress. And at the end of this week, you're not going to recognize the place. A lot of you are saying that we, we, we've spent enough time dawdling and messing around i completely agree it is time to pull our finger out and actually make some decent progress and i'm hoping that this tractor and the log skid that we're actually able to use is going to make a significant difference to it all uh so i'll put that one there chop that one in half and then this one here wants to be chopped into three so I'm now going for roughly the size of logs that we'd be loading into our auto load trailer. Like that. Um, so we just chop the tip off the tree and we'll load those into the small trailer. And then the other ones, we go like this. We, we chop them up a bit like this. Uh, that one I'll just chop in half there. And I'm hoping these are going to... Net us a decent bit of cash. That's, that's the plan. A nice, decent bit of cash. We can carry, we can drag five or six of these logs at once and drag them up to the mill. It's quick and easy to cut them up, and it's also fairly quick and easy to get them onto that, um, the drag anyway, with the chains and everything. So we would cut down a couple more trees here, just in this little group. We'll take that one down, and I've got two trees here really close together, so I'll chop both of these down. And then we'll clean them up, we'll cut them up. I won't even bother taking the tip. Actually, I will. I, I will still do the bit where I cut the tips off, but um, we might just put them in a heap down beside the road and leave them there for a minute. We can always load them up a bit later. Uh, I hate it when it does that. Right, fine. What I will do is this. I run down through like that and I'll clean this one off and then I'll go and clean the other one off. Actually, I don't need to clean the other one off just yet. I can go here and cut that tip off. Like that. So I can pick that one up. I can run it up here and I can jump and push the tree over, he says. I can push trees down. 
I am blessed with superhuman strength. See? I dropped my branch. Grab that. Run that back over to the road over here. So these, if I make a little heap next to the road, I won't lose them, in theory. At least I'm hoping this is the case. Right. Uh, along over to here, and... Yeah, like that. Just go up slow, like this, so that I don't cut the wrong bits or anything like that. See? See what I mean? And then I got one bit there that's sort of a little bit funny. Alright, fine. I'll cut the tip off of that one there like that. And then I'll cut another bit of the tip off like that and grab that bit there and run this out to the road. And then I've got one more to clean up. I've also got those two to cut up a minute. So I've got that one there, which... I think I'll cut that one into three. Cut one there. We will eventually get a Ponzi Scorpion. We can't lease it. I did have somebody saying last week, why am I leasing a forklift? Um, just in case you missed that bit. The forklift stays at the shop, and technically we're not leasing it. Technically, it's there and it's owned by the uh, people at the shop. So we've got the forklift over there, um, and it's available to be used. Because if you go anywhere and you've got pallets to load up, you're, you're not going. They're not going to say, "Oh, you've got to bring your own forklift with you," right? They, they always have a means for you to load the, the load. They, they load the loads for you. Um, so that's basically what that represents, and the leasing cost is just our day-to-day -day expenses. What you'd expect, you know, so we got food and, you know, bits and pieces like that. That's, that's what that one is and what it represents. Um, so technically we're not leasing anything. Um, technically it's, it's just like all of our expenses and stuff like that, so, um... That's what that one's for. That's why we've got that forklift there. Chop you down. And I'll come down here a little bit further. And I'll cut you down there. So that one I've actually cut into four pieces. But yeah, I think that was the right thing to do. Cutting that one into four. And then... Did I have one more here somewhere? Or have I already cut that one up? I think I may have already cut it up. Was it there? I don't know. I, th I think they're all cut up. Anyway, it's 1925, so we'll take the tractor over to our tent now. And we'll get some sleep. I think I think we can stop now. We've got that there. We'll take the Mahindra over to the shop. We'll keep the trailer for the Mahindra. And we'll keep the Mahindra itself because we might be glad of them later on. I'm seriously considering when we get chickens and sheep using the big pallets um, mod that we've got so that you get more product being carried per pallet. Um, it would fit with our narrative of wanting to sell in bulk so that we get better prices for it. Um, I am curious what you're going to say, whether you think I should spend the 100000 on the sell point um, and make that investment so that we get the 150% uh, or if we just spend the 10 grand and get the 100%. Um, obviously, what happens this week is going to greatly influence that decision, I feel. Because um, we're going to, this week, I'm going to sleep for 12 hours. We are half past seven. No, sleep. We go 11 hours. And then we want to wait for a little bit. So we've got seven grand. The vehicle leasing costs. That's the... Um, the, what do you call the, um, uh, the, the, who's we call it? The forklift. It's not actual vehicle leasing cost. We've got 33,700 left. We need to fast forward time until 7 a.m. We're not allowed to start before 7. Um, but yeah, how things pan out with our new tractor and the log skid and, and things like that. I think those are going to greatly influence your um, decisions based on what I do with the, the rest of it. Another reason I want to keep that trailer is because it does actually have a tip and fill function. I'll show you that in a minute. You can actually, and it's the same with the Mahindra itself. The Mahindra does actually have a tip and fill function. 
Um, control I, like that, right? So that force tips there. It does have a fill function on it, so it's got a, an in, a, a built-in capacity to it, and so does the trailer. Now the trailer only does it like that when you force tip, but so it doesn't actually have a tip animation on it. Um, but it does have a capacity on it, and so with that capacity, oh no, we can go faster than 15 miles an hour now. We can go up to 60 miles an hour. That capacity on the trailer is something that I want to make use of. There is a mod that I'm looking out for. It doesn't exist yet. You know what? I'm just going to take that and I'm going to speed it all the way up. There. Go to 60 miles an hour. Uh, the mod doesn't exist yet. It's basically I'm looking for a bucket or a shovel. Some way to pick up loose stuff on the ground. So if we've got loose wood chips on the ground... I can go along with a bucket or a shovel and pick them up, say, 25 litres at a time or 10 litres at a time and shovel it into a trailer by hand. There was no such mod in FS17 and I've not yet seen any such mod in FS19. But if anybody ever does come across a mod like that, please, please, please let me know. Whether it's a bucket or a shovel or anything along those lines, it would be absolutely wonderful, and the Mahindra and the trailer would be perfect, especially if the Sawdust mod that we used to use, if that one's converted over to FS19 or a similar one is released, um, it would mean that we've got little bits of sawdust around, and we could go around with a shovel or a bucket, and we could scoop it up, and we could manually tip it into the back of the Mahindra and the trailer, and then take it off to the... Um, to the sawmill and sell it and I think that would be such an awesome thing to be able to do it would genuinely be wonderful if we could go and do that um, so I, I want to keep the Mahindra even if there's no other reason than for that but also it's a really useful machine for running around right it is a really useful machine for just being able to run around with if we ever want to go off and do a little bit of exploring we've got a nice fast vehicle right here um, we don't have to rely on um, going and buying a pickup or something like that. Um, yes, it's not... You know, in some ways it's more versatile than a pickup because it's smaller, it's able to get places that a pickup can't. In other ways, it's, you know, it's weaker, it can't carry as much. Um, so there are pros and cons. I've worked on farms where an ATV, a quad bike, was the only vehicle they had on the farm besides an old tractor that very very rarely got started and the ATV was used every single day for just about every task um, and so I know how incredibly useful they can be sometimes but right now we're going to be leaving this one here and we'll come back and we'll collect this one later so what we'll do is we'll park this one up here the guy that runs this place, he is not going to mind because I'm just about to buy a tractor from him. Now, I did specifically tell him that I didn't... We're also going to get this one a minute. I did specifically tell him that I didn't like the air-cooled Deutsch tractors, which is why I suspect he went and got them, because the fella has got a sick sense of humour. That's all that can be said about that. He's obviously got a very sick sense of humour. So we're going to bring that round... Swing it right round like that, there, so you can see the the point on it. And I'm going to put that... Actually, I want to bring it back a bit. That's going to go like that, so it's kind of near our tent. There. So we've now got a place where we can go and we can repair our machinery, which is very good. It's, you know, a toolbox and a jack. If you were in this situation, you wouldn't build a custom-built workshop for $25,000. You'd spend $500 on a toolkit and a, a jack. So that, uh, $300, I should say. That is very realistic as far as I'm concerned. That's that, you know, I've used that type of toolkit myself several times. And so I'm, I'm quite happy with that one as a, a toolkit. So now we need to go up here and first thing that we've got to get is this tractor right here. We're not going to bother getting any colours on it. The configuration, we don't want standard, we actually want the front hydraulics. That's going to push the price up a little bit. 
Um, the wheels we will leave exactly as they are at the moment, and we will have a front loader attachment. So that is $22,469. Yes, we will buy. Then we come out of there, and we go now into our forestry equipment. This has got to be the next thing that we buy is that one right there. No options to go with it. It's just that one right there. Buy. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, we cannot afford at the moment the front loader. Actually, we can. 6,400. We need a front weight, though. We do need a front weight to be able to balance out that tractor a little bit. I mean, I suppose we could have the log grab on the front. And that would work like a front weight. That's what I've done previously. Um, in fact, that's pretty much all we had as the front weight was the front loader. Uh, so many loader tractors, you have that. You have a front weight. If you need a front weight, you don't take the loader off. You just leave the, the, the loader on and that's your front weight rather than um, an actual front weight. So we'll go with this one at the moment. We'll go with the small stole, the FZ30 right there. I'm not going to spend money out on colouring it. We don't have the money to spend on frivolities like that. $200 that's going to cost. You wouldn't spend, in, in our situation, you wouldn't do it. You just wouldn't do it. You, you just mix and match however you get it. However it turns up, that's what you take. You're not going to be spending money on taking anything extra. So the next one we want is the log fork. We've got to have that one, $800. We buy that one just as it is. Okay, that leaves us with $232. Not quite enough to get our trailer that we're after. And that bad boy is that one right there. That's $26,000 there. And we're also going to need a dolly to go with it. Uh, nine. What is the difference? I think it's just the colors. I, th I think it's just the color options. Um... Now, on this one, I think we would actually want the wide tyres. It's 9,200. I forgot to look on the other one. So, 9,200, 26,000. We need the wide tyres on this as well. 26,600, so that's 26,800. Call it 2736. Um, we need $36,000 to get the next bit, which is that. After which, we then decide whether or not we're going to be getting the um, the other upgrade. Uh, so we've got the... I, I know that we've got the front hydraulic, and we're not using that front hydraulic at the moment. Because we're not taking the front weight. And we're not um, using a front-mounted machine. But that front hydraulic is something that we will be glad of. Very glad of. So we'll bring that one in there, like that, and hook it on. Let me show you inside the cab here a minute. There it is. Right there beside the window. Actually, just sort of coming back a bit. That's where the control used to be for the um, front loader. For this horrible, horrible machine. It is. It's all come streaming back to me now. Seriously. This is the tractor that I used to drive. Handbrake down there. Uncomfortable seat up there. Actually, the, the seat was broken off in the one that I used to drive. Um, I don't know why they ripped it out, but they did for something. I think it was to put a hedge trimmer control box on there. Um, yeah, actually, that's different. Oh, no, 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 that's the light. That's the lights up there. I thought that was the ignition. Oh, it is the ignition. Okay, that bit's different. I thought that was the lights there for a minute, but it's not the lights. That's actually the ignition switch, isn't it? I think it is. That appears to be the ignition up there on the side. The ignition was... I'm i am certain the ignition was down on the console in the one that I drove. So maybe it's a slightly different model. Most of it looks pretty much identical, though. So, um, yeah. I won't be doing that in cab. I'll tell you that for nothing. I spent enough time in the cab of one of these. Horrible things. Horrible, horrible. Um, however, I have heard a lot of praise for this. Because the air-cooled um, options on it means that uh, you can drive it in much more extreme conditions uh, than you could with a, a water-cooled one. You've got less concern about things like um, it being frozen up and, and, and things like that. So we will take this one back. How is it? 
that the cheap tractors that we get in this series are always exceptionally noisy. Do you remember the cheap Valtra tractor that we had? Um, not Valtra, it was a Valmet, wasn't it? It was before Valtra got involved with Valmet. But uh, the, yeah, the orangey one that we had in the Pacific logging one, um, that was also a noisy tractor, wasn't it? What about if I zoom out? There we go. It's a bit quieter now. <laughs> I might actually have to turn that sound down a little bit. It, it is quite a noisy tractor. And it's very awesome that we've got this tractor. Don't get me wrong. It is very, very awesome that we've got this tractor. We will get this one back. And we will get a few logs dragged up to the sawmill. And we will see how well this little thing is going to pay. Whether or not it's going to pay. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a crucial question. It's definitely a crucial question. Is this going to be worth it? I think it is. I think this is going to be worth it. Much as I may dislike this actual tractor. Purely because it was just horribly uncomfortable to drive. Um, I, I just... I just... I don't know why. I just didn't get on with this tractor. And I spent 15 months working on the farm that owned this tractor. And I had to drive it nearly every day that I was there for the 15 months. Not all day every day. Some of the time in the summer, it was literally all day every day that I was driving it because I was using it to do the grain carts. Um, unfortunately for me, I was one of the... There were four of us students there. One of them was... Let me zoom out a bit. I'm going to have to be shouting to be heard over that. Um, one of the students had been there for a full year and he was either... He, he got the pick of the tractors. So he would pick the nice, shiny, big John Deere, which was the best tractor on that farm. Uh, John Deere 7700. So that was the one that he would do the grain carting with. Then there were two other fairly good tractors. Um, and then there was this old Deutz. Of course, the other two students were not particularly experienced. And the trailers we were using were big and heavy. The manager took me aside at the beginning of the summer and he said, you are a really good tractor driver you know what you're doing with a tractor and quite frankly i don't trust the other two to drive that uh, deutz and have a big heavy trailer on the back so i'm putting you on the deutz for the summer and i thought well that's just great i've put in all this time and effort and work in order to be able to improve myself as a tractor driver and here i am at uh, 19 or 20 or whatever it was um, and I'm being rewarded for all of that effort I've put in by being given the worst tractor in existence and being told it's because that that is my reward I get to have that tractor for the summer I was not a happy bunny I, I, I will tell you that right now I was not a happy bunny and I told him so I said, so basically, because I've taken the time and effort to go and actually improve myself and make sure that I'm not completely useless, I did, I said this, I, 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 was, I was not beating about the bush about this, um, I, I'm not completely useless and I can actually be trusted to drive a vehicle, you're rewarding me by giving me the worst piece of something not repeatable on your farm. Um, and I, I looked at him, I said, can you understand why I might be just a little bit annoyed about this? Now, he was an extremely feisty person, right? And he just looked at me and he said, yes, there's nothing you can do about it. And he turned around and walked off. So that was that. Although, to be fair, he did sort of make it up to me in other ways. Um, he, he did sort of find ways to sort of, uh, you know, make it up a little bit. You know, if, if there was a... A particularly nasty job that needed doing the other two were the ones that were generally called upon to go and do said uncomfortable job and then i would get their tractor temporarily while they went and did it little things like that so it did make a bit of a difference right it did make a little bit of a difference okay so the rope is automatically off for the taj for taj for that doesn't sound right now i'm looking at this would it be ty typhon I don't know. I, I don't know the country of origin for this one, so I'm not sure how that would... Because... Uh, ta Tarfun? Tarkfun? Tajfun? It wouldn't be Tajfun. 
So I, I'm not quite sure. If anybody knows the correct way to pronounce this, can you please spell it out phonetically in the description down below? Because it does depend entirely on its country of origin as to how that one would be pronounced. And you know I don't actually like um, getting those wrong. So we got to here, object too heavy. Now we used to press B to do this, didn't we? B doesn't work. Right, I've got I've got the rope on here, so I, I'm up to here. Enter vehicle, right. Uh, oh, how about we turned it on? We've got honk, detach all, turn on the logging winch, so it's on. I can lower it down to the ground. Obviously, I don't think that matters to me at the moment. So I'll come out of there. Do I just click? I can't remember. Uh, oh, was it right click? Right, I'm clicking both of them. Oh, B. Now, because it's on. Press B and attach. Press B and attach onto there. That'll attach onto the next one. Attach up to there. Attach down to there. Now, there is a weight limit on this one. I remember there being a weight limit. I can do that. And I can do that. But it all goes from that one point there. That's where they all go from. So, chain remain... Oh, wait. Yes, you've got, you've got like a limit on the amount of chain that can go out and that you can use. Remember that bit as well. Uh, winching is to press Z. So, we're, we're going to go back in here. Detach or fast winch is left shift. Which you wouldn't necessarily do. So, let's, let's just hide that a minute. And press Z. Now... Remember, we're supposed to lower it down like that. So you can you can just winch like this. And it's going to start pulling all of those logs up already. And I can fast winch like that. Now, I'm going to want to turn these around a little bit. So I'm going to lift that one up. And in theory, I wouldn't do it like this. But I also, I, I would... I'm aware that we're not doing this entirely correctly. I am aware that we're not doing this entirely correctly. So I'll put another one onto there because I want that one to come out. And then that one there. Actually, what I do want to do is I want to do... Wait, it's a left shift B. That disconnects everything. Like that. So we'll, we'll do this again. But this time I'm going to go B onto there. And I'll do one onto there. And then we go one on there. And one on there. Onto there. And I'll do one up on there. But I'm going to do it on this end of this one. Like that. So I've got that sort of line of them there. I'm not going to take any more than that. We'll leave it like that for a minute. And I'm just going to inch it forward a bit. There, now they're all kind of coming out together how they should be. So then we will we'll lower it down like that and we'll pull that winch in. Hey, I, I know that you wouldn't necessarily leave them all lying on the ground either. Right, you bring them up to the winch like that, but I don't want to bring them up any higher than that. And I think what I can do, though, is I can push that one up like that. And then I can lower them all back. I, I can bring it back like that. Lower it down. Maybe just pull forward a little bit. And we go left shift B and undo, undo all of them. And then I go back over to here again. And this time... I'll do it like that. Right? We will go through... I've got some that are not going to gather up. I've got one over there. That. And i got one in... Uh, I've got that one as well. Right. That's all of them. Right. They're, they're more gathered together now. So I should, in theory now, be able to lift that one up a bit. I'm still... I'm still not pulling them right. Not entirely correctly. I, I am aware of that. But, at the same time, I don't think that's far off. I mean, look at all those logs we're dragging along. 
it seems correct to use it. You can, like, now the noise of this engine, that seems absolutely spot on, that does, doesn't it? That seems spot on. The noise of that engine. Yeah, you know what I was doing? I was getting a screenshot. Shamelessly. There's, there's no shame involved. And we drag this one like this, and I suppose I ought to just pull that winch in a little bit, did I? Just like that. You want to try and keep... We need to try and keep the wire rope as short as possible. Because I think what you would do is you'd actually have the... It would just be the chains that you'd be using for the dragging. Whereas the wire rope, that would be pulled right back in, and you wouldn't be putting the... You wouldn't be using that as the drag point. You'd be using... That would be hooked securely right up against the blade and then the chains would be doing the dragging so we'll we just say that that's what we've done just just pretend that that's what you know that the frithgar has actually done something right just just pretend just for once we got a 100 horsepower tractor powering up look at it go ladies and gentlemen we are cooking on gas now this is about to change the face of the Boulder Canyon series. This is what I've been waiting for. This is the mod that I've been waiting for, actually. And if we'd had this mod a week or two earlier, then things would have changed a week or two earlier. I can promise you that. Uh, so we've got all of those logs there. Let's see if it was worth all that time and effort. How much do you think we're going to get? Get into the comment section and type right now what you think we we're going to get for these logs right here. My own personal guess is... $3,500. We got $6,000. Yes. Now we're talking. Oh, yes. That is fantastic. $6,000 for those. Definitely, definitely worth the money. This is the way forward. Oh, that is fantastic. That feels good. That feels really good. It's not even nine o'clock and we've already netted ourselves six thousand dollars. <laughs> it's awesome. Right, we've got another load of logs up here ready to drag, which we can start hooking up. But we will do that in our next episode. We can start moving a few of them now. Actually, one thing I am going to do is I'm just going to... Oh, no, I need to switch over to the log grab like that i'm going to take the log grab now remember i do do this on um keyboard so it's you've got to bear with me on that um there we go right so we can we can pick these things up and we can move them around using the old um log grab as well just like dump them down into neater and tidier piles if we want to just a little bit just for something extra to do like that and there's another one over there that i will grab so if you've enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give us a like and if you really enjoyed it then please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome if you would like to have more regular input into the community here than is just offered by the comment section, then please do consider joining our Discord channel. We have an absolutely wonderful Discord channel. A lot of active people on there. A lot of good conversations taking place uh, concerning this game and concerning all the other games that I play on the channel as well. Um, there is a link in the description down below for that one. And, of course, let's not forget our weekly question. Do you want me to get the 150% sale point and spend $100,000 buying a load of storage area for it so that we can, you know, it, it, it would basically represent us um, getting, decent get, getting decent storage and, and then being able to hold material and products until such time as a decent price became available. That's what, that's what that would represent in my mind. Um, so would you like us to do that or do you think we should just take what price we can get? We haven't, you know, it's going to be a job to get decent prices up here in stick. So therefore, we should spend the 10 grand on the regular sell points and do it that way instead. So it's your vote, it's your game. Head into the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Do we spend 100,000 
on the 150% sale point or do we spend 10 grand on the regular sale points? Um, I was up until this point planning to spend 100,000 on the uh, regular sale point. But a number of people did actually suggest that this should be slightly different. Um, quite a lot of you said that this should be different. Um, and so, yeah, I have decided to change that. Just, just to clarify, I was not originally intending to do it like this. But I am now because of so many people saying in the comment section and also people coming onto the Discord and telling me on there that they thought that I should seriously consider changing the way that I was going to approach doing that particular little aspect of it. So that is all we got time for. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.